Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up for you guys, which I'm very excited about because I have some good books to talk about today. I think I ended up reading like nine books in February, I think, so rather content with that. I was definitely in a reading slump at the beginning of this month thanks to a certain book, which is on the top of this pile right here, but after that kind of went away, definitely got in some good reading. So we are going to talk about all of the books I read and yeah. We're just gonna get into it. So I'm going to start out with Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. We all know how much I've been talking about this for the last like few months now. I definitely, like it was a moment when I was finally able to go to Barnes and Noble on that sunny Tuesday morning and pick up this book. So obviously I gave this book a five stars. There probably, like there was no way I wasn't going to give this book five stars because I had very few things that I wanted to see happen in this book and the rest of it I was like, we'll just see how it goes. And while I definitely loved it, I don't love it anywhere near as much as I love the first two books in this series, which is kind of disappointing, but I also kind of anticipated that based on like, the amount of things that have to happen in this book. Like I just love like the characters and the setting of this series so much and that's what really makes this series for me that when the plot had to like get moving I was kind of like oh okay. <laughs> so I've spent a ton of time talking about this recently so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it now because I do have an entire hour-long spoiler-free vlog. <laughs> if anybody wants to check it out I think it'll be here. I liked it. I really liked it. And I love the characters, love so many of the things that happen in this book, but it just wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. And like, I'm not, uh, I just have very mixed feelings on this conclusion to the series. I don't know. Also, the last thing that I want to say about this book, which is also like a big reason as to why this book got five stars, is that it put me into the biggest, worst, most depressing, full of just like anguish book hangover that I have ever experienced in my life. Like the day after I finished this, I was like, I will never read another book again. Like, which is so dramatic, but I was like, I was so, so sad that the series is over because it's like one of my top two favorite series. And I've been waiting for the third book for like two years and after I read this book I just felt so empty inside. I was like what do I do now? I don't have anything to live for which like obviously that's not the case but I was going through it the day after I finished this book. It was not an enjoyable experience but it was also like if a book can make me feel such emotions like there's no way I can't give it a five star but it was definitely not good emotions yeah I just I just wanted to let you know that you know even when I wasn't reading this book it was putting me through it but next up I want to talk about something that is related to that so I actually picked this book up and tried to read it when I initially read Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron in summer of like 2021 maybe and I made it like halfway through the book and I put it down but I finally decided this February, that since I finally finished The Last Hours, I was going to pick this book up and read it. So, I also read Great Expectations this month by Charles Dickens. If you guys don't know, which I'm sure a lot of you do, The Last Hours series is based on Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Uh, you probably know that though because a quote from this book is literally on the first page of Chain of Gold. And obviously I had to read it because I love The Last Hour so much so I knew at some point in time I needed to read Great Expectations to see where the inspiration comes from. And I very much enjoyed reading this book. Like I'm kind of surprised that I liked it as much as I did. I definitely found this book to be like very funny in some spots, very sad in some spots. I really liked following our main character Pip and the, um, you know, character growth that he was going through over the course of this book. So basically this follows our main character Pip who kind of grows up, I don't know if he's poor necessarily, but he doesn't have a lot of money. He's not like wealthy by 1800s standards, but one day he gets an anonymous benefactor and he is going to be brought out into society as a gentleman. So I really like that concept. You're spending a lot of the book trying to figure out who this anonymous benefactor is and then when Pip figures out and you figure it out, you don't really know how to feel, but it's very interesting to see 
how opinions on certain things change over the course of the book. It definitely talks a lot about social classes and classism and prejudices against people who are of a lower social class and it's just very interesting to see somebody who started out in like a, a lower position I guess in society and seeing them brought into that you know wealthy high society kind of life and how they deal with it and overall i just really enjoyed this and i'm so glad that this was well i guess this isn't my first dickens because i have read a christmas carol before but this is like my first proper dickens novel and i very much enjoyed it so i will absolutely be reading more i know for certain that at some point in time i will be reading a tale of two cities and annotating it much in the same way kind of looking for those similarities between that and the infernal devices which i'm so excited to do that so yes very jazzed that i was finally able to get to this book there were so many characters that i just found so interesting mainly miss havisham and estella who are kind of where a lot of the inspiration cassandra clare takes for the last hours comes from that was a sentence but i really liked when you know they were in a scene with pip because the main dynamic that is taken from this book and used in the last hours is the dynamic between pip estella and miss havisham because it very much is just Tatiana, Grace, and James, and I loved seeing the parallels. It was like, that was my absolute favorite part. All of like the red tabs in here are all of my last hour's connections. <laughs> I could spend a lot of time talking about this book, which I'm not going to do, but it, there's so many good quotes in this book. Like if I see a book that has some stunning quotes in it, I'm like, okay, fine. I need to read it now, but <laughs> I've spent way too much time talking about this book, but I feel like there are just so many things I could potentially say about it, but it happened it happened next up we have six crimson cranes by elizabeth lynn this is the women's words book club pick for mar no not march february every time i go to say which month our book club book was for all thoughts leave my head but this was our book club pick for february i ended up giving this one a 3.5 star but i feel like maybe it's more of a three i don't know after our like this live discussion about it i was like hmm it probably is more of a three, even though I originally gave it a 3.5. I liked this book. I thought it was definitely really fun. It's very whimsical. It's very fairy tale esque. It is based off of a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. And it like takes that, but it weaves in like, you know, Asian mythology. And that is such a good concept. Love that concept. However, I don't think the execution was exactly something that I was into. I liked it, but I just never felt at any point during this book that I was really invested in it. Which is a shame because I went into this really hoping I would love it, but it kind of just happened. I listened to this book on audio and I think that was definitely the right call for this book because I don't think I would have wanted to finish it if I was reading it physically. But since somebody else was reading it to me, I was like, okay, fine, we can read some more. But I just, I didn't love it. It felt very juvenile. I feel like if this had been marketed as middle grade, I would have been eating it up but it wasn't so i don't like i don't know initially after i read it i was like okay like that was pretty good but i haven't really thought about it since like a good mark of whether or not a book deserves a high rating from me is if i like you know constantly am thinking about it after i read it like these two books i've thought about them quite a bit after i finished reading them but this one no thoughts have entered my head aside from like our live show since I first read it, so like, I wish I loved it. I have very neutral feelings on it. It's not a bad book, but I just, nah. So next up I have three graphic novels to talk about, which I'm just going to talk about all together. They're very heavy, honestly, because like it's three books full of full color illustrations with very thick pages. So like it hurts my wrists. <laughs> Which, that sounds so sad, but it's true. But I picked the first book up in this series from the library on just like a whim in January because I had previously read like the first bit of the webtoon, but I put it down because I didn't like reading the webtoon on my phone. And I was like, you know what, maybe eventually I'll get back to it. And then they ended up publishing them, like actually. So I was like, okay, that's my sign that I should like actually start reading this series again. And I loved it so much. Honestly, I'm not surprised that I enjoyed it because I'm sure, um, as a lot of us do, I very much enjoy Greek mythology. I've actually taken a couple of courses like about Greek mythology and whatnot throughout college. Like my freshman year, I just took like a general Greek mythology overview class. And then my sophomore year, I took a Greek lit class, which I loved that class so much. Like it was so fun. And we read like all of the big ones. We read the Iliad, the Odyssey. We read like some plays by Sophocles and Aeschylus and 
somebody else. We also read like some of the Homeric hymns and uh, like all of it was so fun and I had such a good time like taking that course. But after I finished that class, I was like, I think I've had enough Greek related um, literature for a while. So I did not pick up anything. Well, actually that's a lie because I picked up the Touch of Ruin series by Scarlett St. Clair last um, January. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent, just about like a bunch of random stuff. But it's been a while. We'll just say it's been a while since I have read anything really relating to Greek mythology and I enjoyed it so much because like obviously it mainly focuses on Hades and Persephone but you also have like all of the other gods and goddesses. It's definitely been it's been a slow burn so far as far as Hades and Persephone goes because we're in the third volume and like obviously groundwork is being laid. Nothing has happened and I know there are like a million what are they called like episodes yes there's like <laughs> there's so many episodes of like the webtoon that i know it's gonna be a while but that's okay because i did genuinely just enjoy all three of these so much i love the art style i love the story i love following persephone as a main character i find her character to be very hit or miss with how it's portrayed by authors but i do very much enjoy how she's portrayed in these books. I also find like this entire series so far to be very funny. Like there are definitely many moments when I'm having a very good time, but it also does deal with some more um, serious and dark topics. So if you do wanna check it out, I would recommend checking out the trigger warnings, but I do think it's a fantastic graphic novel series and I'm so excited for the fourth volume, which I think comes out sometime in June, maybe. So definitely will be picking that up when it comes out. I'm so excited for it. Next up, I have a series that I recently started, which I am absolutely loving so much. I think there is potential <laughs> that it might become one of my new favorite series. And that is the Veronica Speedwell mystery series by Deanna Rayborn. So basically this is kind of like a, it's kind of like a romance mystery series of sorts because you do follow our two main characters, Veronica and Stoker, who go around solving mysteries and all that fun stuff, but there is a stunning slow burn romance throughout this course of the series. And like even the first two books, like I love it so much. And there's like six other books in this series. So I know it's going to be a slow burn, but I'm willing to experience that slow burn for them. Honestly, I've also talked about this series a lot in my vlogs recently, but the banter is amazing between these two characters because they're both like very intelligent people. So all of their remarks are just like so, they're like so smart and quippy and I love it so much. Just watching them banter is my favorite thing about this series. Like so far, I haven't been too invested in the mysteries that have been in either of these, but like I don't even care because I will read it for them. <laughs> it's so good. And I'm definitely going to be reading the third one, I think this weekend actually, which I'm so excited about, which is A Treacherous Curse. I have it sitting over here. And this one, I think they go to Egypt, which I'm so excited about. Ooh, this. Every time I read the back of this book, I'm like, I want to read it right now. But these have been amazing. I gave the first one five stars and I gave the second one four or like a 4.5 star. Either way, they're both fantastic. I love it so much. And then finally, I saved this for last because it's like the most boring one on this list. But in an attempt to get myself out of my reading slump that Chain of Thorns put me in, I picked up the Infernal Devices again. <laughs> I think this is my fifth read of this series. Need I say more? No. <laughs> so yeah, honestly, oh, I'm enjoying it so much. Like every time I do a reread of this series, I'm like, I never get bored. It's so good. I love it so much. And every time I read this series, I just fall more and more in love with Jem Carstairs. Like that, oh, what a man. <laughs> Jem is a gem and I love him so much, but that is my February wrap up. So so many good books this month. I feel like for the most part, I just loved every single book. Maybe aside, from one, but the rest of them, absolutely adored. So I am so excited that I got to so many good books this month. I hope you guys also got to some amazing books this month. I would absolutely love it if you would tell me in the comments some of the books that you have read this month, or I would also love it if you would tell me what some of your least favorite books that you read this month are. I love reading those comments so much. Like they're very entertaining. So if you wanna let me know, please do let me know. And yeah, I suppose that's it. I'm going to let you guys go and I will see you all in my next video. Oh my god, this is heavy. Ow! No, it keeps... No! Stop falling! Ah! I hate taking thumbnails. I can't lie, this is really...
Ah, the like tabs on this are scratching my chest so badly. You see that? <laughs> I understand, man. That's gotta be good.